You are here at the historical library of the Heidelberg University Eye Clinic. Some of these old books date back to the 15th and 16th century. If I look at one of these books, here is a book about the Congress of the German Ophthalmological Society from 1857. I can see that at this time one of the topics was artificial cornea, already more than 150 years ago. In a recent publication in the Journal of Ophthalmology for the German Keratoplasty Register, we can see a lot of interesting information. The last 10 years, the Keratoplasty Register could see that the numbers of corneal transplant has almost doubled. Nowadays in Germany, almost 70% of corneal procedures are cases like DMEC, and only 30% are perforating keratoplasty. So we actually don't really need an artificial cornea, we need artificial DMEC. I want to introduce to you an artificial DMEC corneal lamella, which is called EndoArt and which was developed by a startup company from Israel, which is called ION. It decreases the inflow of aqueous humor into the corneal stroma, and by this it decreases the corneal edema. It almost looks like a contact lens. It is six millimeter in diameter. It has a dome-shaped form. It is made from a hydrophilic acrylic material, the same material that we use in hydrophilic intraocular lenses made from the company Contact Mac. It's biocompatible and biostable and it is done with a lathe cut procedure. Let's see at our first patient where we implanted this kind of implant. The first case was a 58 year old patient and the right eye of this patient has undergone several procedures and we see in the OCT of the cornea a thickness of 730 microns. Let's have a look at the video of the implant procedure. For the implantation of the artificial DMEC lamella we use a conventional intraocular lens injector. You can see here how the lamella is moved forward in the cartridge. We use a 2.5 mm incision to implant the device into the anterior chamber. The first thing that you can see here is an air bubble coming out. It's not the implant, but then the implant is followed and it's laying down on the iris. In contrast to a natural human donor lamella, you can touch the artificial lamella. We take a sauter cannula to lift it up against the cornea and they do a first positioning with a small air bubble. And we use a spatula to center it. We use the Zeiss Artveo microscope and now you can see here the OCT of the anterior segment and you can see very nicely how the lamella is fit to the posterior surface. You can also see some remnants of the bullous keratopathy of the epithelium as you see here when we increase the magnification. Now let's look at the implant. It really attached firmly to the posterior surface. And at the edges of the implant we can see that we have done the right positioning. We also put some gas-air combination inside the anterior chamber to firmly press the implant against the cornea. Now let's have a look at the first post-op day. You can see already, compared to the pre-op day, a much clearer cornea. If we look at the OCT, we see a decrease of corneal thickness down to 593 microns, which already is a good success. Three days later, the cornea becomes even clearer. Corneal thickness in OCT measurement 578 micron. Two weeks later, you see that we have a completely cleared central area, six millimeter of the cornea and now we have a normal corneal thickness of 495 microns. Here you see the final picture of this patient just a few days ago, which we have done with the anterior system from Heidelberg Engineering. Let's look at the second patient where we put this implant in. The second patient was an 80-year-old patient 
who had a Fuchs corneal dystrophy. He suffered from a bullous keratopathy, which also f led to a very scarring epitheliopathy. Here you see the implantation. So again, the lens was loaded into a conventional IOL inserter, then implanted through a 2.5 millimeter incision, as you can see here. We take a Sauter cannula to lift it up against the cornea. Here we fixate the implant with the air bubble. Already the first day post-op, the patient had a decreased corneal thickness of 487 microns. Here you can see the development over the following months and you can see that the cornea remained between 450 and 480 microns so we had a normal thickness of the corneal stroma and no water inside the stroma anymore. Here we see an anterior OCT imaging of patient number two. You can see how nicely the implant is attached to the posterior surface of the cornea. In all meridians, we have excellent adhesion of the implant. These two patients have already this artificial DMAC layer for seven to eight months in their eyes. We can say that we have a proof of concept here that it really can decrease corneal swelling and keep the cornea clear. We still have to work on the surgical technique and also look for handling of complication, repositioning and so on. But already we can see that this is a usable solution for patients who need an endothelial procedure and where we have a need for a transplant.